just terrific conditions to play footy in. Goldstein. Oh, decisive. Got it down to Adams, and Adams snaps it goal, and he's put it through. He's got two. You know, I played with some of the toughest players going around. It was nearly a, a badge of honour to say that you played on through an injury. And... Oh, Webb. Well, crikey. Mm. I can think of a lot of heads I wouldn't want to hit, but he would be number one. We've got players who get concussed, don't know who they're playing or they, they, which way are we kicking. I believe there's an epidemic of footballers now in their 70s that are going down, and some of them are a lot younger than that. And when you watch someone go down that horrendous track and become a sausage, you think to yourself, oh my God, I, I, could, never, I could never burden everyone with this. Because if we don't do this, there won't be a coat. This is what it's all about. Well, don't see that too often. Adams, as a result of the error by Dangerfield, turns around and kicks the goal. That's his third, their most dangerous forward. Got drafted to North Melbourne in 2007. Uh, I was lucky enough to play 104 games. Lee and I have been together for oh, 11 years. Um, high school sweethearts, I guess you'd call us. Oh, I just grew up with it. Uh, I love the game, uh, love everything about it. I um, was lucky enough to live a childhood dream and, and play it for, as a profession for nine years. This looks like a head clash with the ground. I think he's been driven, driven hard in the ground. Yeah, yeah. Left shoulder and head, that's tough to take. Early on in your career, you probably tried to hide everything. Every sort of injury you had, you just wanted to stay out on the field. You know, didn't want to look weak or anything like that. It's a contact sport, and um, knocks to the head were probably a, a weekly occurrence. And occasionally, those knocks left Lee concussed. I likened it to feeling like you've had a, a hangover. I always felt really lethargic, headaches, um, not quite with it. I'd sit there being quite, um, oh God, please just get through the game. I didn't care about a win, a loss, a draw, like, even if he got three touches, I, like, I didn't care as long as um, he got through healthy. After five concussions in 12 months, a neurologist told Lee that he'd have to retire from footy or risk permanent brain damage. He was just 26. You know, I was in a, probably a pretty bad headspace for, for nearly 12 months, probably. Depression, the, the anger management sort of issues, and um, I think that's when I knew that, yeah, footy's not that, much, that important. This is a, a bigger issue, and I need to just get myself right, pretty much. Football players have a lot of pressures on them. There's careers, there's contracts, there's expectations, there's their own personal pride. But they have to look at this in terms of their long-term future. You don't play football for very long anymore. The average career is less than five years. You've got a lot of time after that. You actually want to be able to remember your kid's name in the future. Dr Adrian Cohen is investigating the long-term impacts of repeated head knocks on Australian football players. 90% of concussions don't involve somebody being knocked out. It involves them being in an impact and then dazed, confused, stumbling, seeing stars, hearing noises, anything other than their full mental capacity. And sometimes that's difficult to see. Dr Cohen says a danger from repeated concussions can linger long after symptoms have disappeared. Concussion is a disease of energy. Every time there's a collision, Every time you head the ball, you're actually transmitting force to the brain. Energy is being absorbed by the brain. And over time, this builds up. CTE. CTE. It's a CTE. CTE. In recent years, American football, the NFL, has been rocked by the discovery of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, a form of dementia that affects former players. CTE is a degenerative disease that often develops in someone's 40s or 50s although it has been seen in players as young as 18. America has probably poured $100 million into the research. Um, in Australia, we're looking at, you know, maybe a couple of million. Professor Alan Pearce says more funds are needed to explore the risks of CTE in Australia. The brain is a very soft and squishy material. It's got the consistency of custard. You can actually squeeze it and the tissue will go through your hands. So when you're receiving a, a significant knock to the head or to the body that shakes the head violently, the, the tissue moves. If the tissue moves with the right force in the wrong way, a concussion develops. But a player doesn't have to get concussed to develop CTE. So someone might get a big knock, they fall down to the ground, they get back up and they keep running. So it's these tens of thousands of hits 
over a career of 20, 15, 20 years. Very, very you know, minor hits that, that accumulate over time. Stephen Taylor watched his father die after a long, slow battle with dementia. The beginning was like the, the, you know, the typical things that you read about forgetting of car keys or I can't remember how to get to that place that he might have driven to a hundred times. Barry Tizza Taylor was an icon, playing nearly 250 games of Australian Rugby League. He was a, I guess a leader, he was a coach. There's a few bad names a few people called him over the years. He was tough. Dad was tough. By the end, Barry was a shadow of his former self. He couldn't talk, really. I mean, he was sort of a little monosyllabic in the end, you know, yes or no, good, bad. Just out of curiosity, I said to him one day, what, what's your name? And he looked at me and he went. Although doctors said it was Alzheimer's, Stephen suspected his dad's footy career was to blame. My generation, we were so naive to think that it only really counts if you're in a boxing ring, that if you get, you know, if you get knocked out in football or you can take a few hits, it's no big deal. The brain doesn't know the difference. Author and former rugby player Peter Fitzsimons has been crusading to get Australian codes to take CTE seriously. Tizza Barry Taylor was my coach in the Australian under-21s in 1983 and then my coach for New South Wales, I think, 86, 87. CTE can only be diagnosed post-mortem and the only dedicated brain bank is in Boston. So when Peter heard of Tizza's decline, he pulled some strings. I made one phone call to Boston and they arranged for it to be done, to, for Barry's brain to be extracted. It was one of the worst five brains they had ever seen. And she said, I've held your father's brain in my hand. I don't know how he was alive on any level. I can only imagine what you guys have gone through and what he went through. Tizza became the first Australian player to have a confirmed case of CTE. Of the more than 200 brains taken from deceased NFL players, 99% were found to have the disease. So the question is, are Australian codes just as dangerous? We have to have a very specific, nationally coordinated brain bank here in Australia in order to answer that question. The games are definitely different, but the brains are not. So your brain doesn't care whether you're in a car accident, a front row of a football team, or whether you're skydiving. It's absorbing energy and damage is being done. In recent years, Aussie codes have gotten serious about concussion, with exclusion rules and mandatory testing. But Peter Fitzsimons reckons the rules aren't being consistently applied. When I see it with my very eyes, these guys knock motherless. They can't get up. And, you know, afterwards, what happened? Why did he go back out there? Oh, well, it proved not to be concussion. What the fuck was it? Was it flu? What? I mean, it's bullshit. And on the issue of CTE, many observers think the codes are dragging their feet. We need to be brave enough to be able to do the research and find out one way or the other. If we don't find anything, great. Fantastic. We can, we can play. If we do, then we need to find out how we can make the sport safer. It needs to change. It must be illegal to strike the head. So it's not good enough to just say, there was a head high tackle, the player's been put on report. What does that mean? Ban the player for a year, send them from the field. Oh, but his team might lose. Yeah. I think the codes will be obliged to take it seriously because one of these legal suits is going to be pinned to their forehead and they're going to have to write a cheque for a million, if not ten. And at that point, they will take it dead seriously. Mm -hmm.